So when doing a problem like this, um, exact same thing, ladies and gentlemen, that we did before. You need to evaluate, find all the important information. So we're going to write it out. Amplitude, period, x scale, vertical transformation, and phase shift. Doing the exact same thing. Now, the nice thing about tangent and cotangent, the amplitude, did you guys notice that the graph shot up approaching its asymptote? Right? So there's no ceiling to it or no ground. So guess what? The amplitude, there is no amplitude. It's infinite in the positive and the negative direction. So we don't have an amplitude. So it's none. The period, if you guys notice, the period, it only went pi before it started repeating itself. So if we have a change in period, the period is pi over b. When sine and cosine was 2 pi over b, tangent and cotangent is just pi over b. So therefore, pi over b, in this case, my b is 1. So it should be pi over 1, which equals pi. All right, now the next step, this is something I do a little bit differently. All right, I'm not as concerned about f having four. I'm not as concerned in this class about you guys having four important points. I'm really only concerned about you guys having two important points. Where's the x-intercept? Where's the asymptote? All right, we'll go over some problems where you'll see how the tangent graph changes. And when we do that, do that, we can do a scale of four. But for right now, I'm just going to do a scale of two. So therefore, your x scale for this class is pi over b divided by two. I just want to find the most two important points. So in this point, it's pi halves. Then my vertical transformation is d. Anything adding or subtracting outside my function? Nope. So that's going to be none. And phase shift, you do the exact same thing. x minus pi over 3 equals 0. Add pi over 3 to both sides. x equals 0. So now we need to graph this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Graphing this, we need to again remember what does the parent graph of tangent look like. Remember, the parent graph of tangent has an x-intercept at 0, right? It, it crossed at 0. That was the first initial step. So I can say, all right, well, there's 0. But remember, when we're looking at a phase shift, that's where we can start the graph. So instead of starting at 0, what I'm now going to do, Kobe, is start at pi over 3. Actually, I don't know where 0 is. But I'm going to start at pi over 3. I know that for the tangent graph is going to be my first x-intercept. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, Caroline, is if that's pi over 3, what is my scale? Again, my scale is pi halves. But um, when looking at that, that means that each one of my scaling points right, is going to be pi halves away from each other. So now, to find this next coordinate, I need to add pi halves to pi over 3. And this could be a little bit difficult, right? Because you're like pi over 3 plus pi halves. Well, one thing to help you guys out is just rewrite pi halves as a common denominator. Let's instead, I'm sorry, pi thirds. Instead of writing this as pi over 3, right? Could we also just write it as 2 pi over 6? And the reason why I like that, 2 pi over 6, because then I can rewrite this as 3 pi over 6, right? So then, this is the exact same thing, but instead of adding pi over 2, I'm just now adding 3 pi over 6. It's much easier now to find the next point, right? The next point we know here is going to be 5 pi over 6. Do you guys see how, see how I did that? Now I can just continue doing that. So I'll just add 8 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. The same thing, uh, this is what, 3 pi, um, 2 pi over 6. The same thing for tangent, I like to go in the negative direction as well as the positive direction. So therefore, if I subtract 2 pi over 6, uh, if I subtract 3 pi over 6, now I'm going to have negative pi over 6, negative 4 pi over 6, negative 7 pi over 6. Yes? I haven't created it yet. Now, if you look at it, I go from positive to negative. Therefore, my y-axis has to be between these two values, right? So therefore, I can just draw it. All right. 
And the y-axis is not really as much as important as, as far as your scaling on the x-axis. So now we know we start here. The next important point is going to be an asymptote. Then the next important point is an x-intercept. The next important point is an asymptote. Over here, that's going to be my asymptote, x-intercept, and asymptote. Okay. So now, what again does my tangent graph look like? Falls left, rises to the right. You only need to do two periods, but I guess I'm doing three of them. I'm sorry? How do you know what was asymptote? Remember when I, when I showed you guys the parent graph. Parent graph of tangent. There's two important points that I talked about with your x scale. The only important point is your x-intercept and your asymptote. So your x scale, your first, your x scale, the next point is going to be the asymptote. The next point after that is an x-intercept. The next point of that is an asymptote. So that's why I broke it up into two, because I think it's easier to graph it that way. Okay? Now, this doesn't tell you how the when doing it only with two scales, it's easier to find the x asymptote and the and the, the x-intercept. It does not really sh help you to form the exact curve of the graph, but that's not just something I'm very um, particular about when you guys are graphing tangent and cotangent. Okay, so that's your example for that. Anybody else have any other questions? 